It's time for bookkeeping, beer, and BS. For a long time, I just, I didn't appreciate the admin role in the business. And it was just in my mind that it's a deadweight cost and we need to minimize it. And so I would push it off. If I was like scaling a business, I would add administrative resources the latest. As I've screwed up a lot of businesses and lost a lot of money over the years, I realized that that was probably like the biggest mistake I've made is waiting too long to add admin resources because all that would happen is I would end up doing the administrative work. And I know for sure that the cost for me and the enjoyment for me of doing, of sending out invoices and replying to emails and answering phones is probably where I'm least valuable. Not that I can't do it, but I'm not going to be great at it. I'm definitely not going to love it. I'm not going to like scramble back to answer the phone, you know, from an, from an administrative perspective. And yet I would look at it as a cost rather than an investment when really it was like the best investment to free me up. And so if there's one thing you guys to take out of today, it's do not delay getting administrative resources. Don't, don't mismanage it. Don't go blow a shitload of money on it and overspend on it. Make sure it's growing your revenue. It's just an investment, right? It's administrative resources need to make you more money. And they sure as hell should because they should free you up to go sell more and make more money. Um, but don't be the dummy that I was and avoid adding administrative resources. I think that was the stupidest thing I ever did. Um, so, Angela, let me hit you with this. If if somebody is like on that fence, what do you say to that? Is there is there somebody's on that fence of adding an administrative resource? Is there is there a reason they shouldn't? Or would you just be like, yo, if you run a small business, what are you waiting for? Add an administrative resource. So like you said, in the beginning, it's hard because you don't want to overspend. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like hiring someone here, hiring someone to be in an office in the US, one, so often home services businesses, like they might not have an office for that person to sit in. So now it's, I have to find somewhere for that person to sit and answer the phones. And I'm hiring another person. Can I absorb that cost? Whereas with a virtual team member, you're not having a physical space and it's a lot less significant cost. When getting off of the fence, I would say this is the easiest position to the easiest position I do different than um, an executive partner to match up the ROI with the cost of a virtual team member and replacing the admin in for two reasons. One, like you said, you free up yourself. Many people think they can do the admin role and they can do it at night when they get off the truck. Which which they can, but like... I haven't talked to one entrepreneur yet that's like, man, I can't wait to get home and send out my estimates for the day and all my follow-up invoices and check my email. Nobody, no, I've, I have yet to run into, I've run into more uh, business owners that have said, I like doing bookkeeping. I've run into more that have said that than said, I love to get home and send out invoices and do other administrative work. So for all the client facing things, that's where you can see the immediate ROI because you are absolutely missing it if you don't have a dedicated person for it. Mm -hmm. You can't, and this is what people tell me, these are the conversations I have, right? You're on the roof, you're in the yard, and you can't answer the phone at the same time. And it is becoming, because so many people have good admins and are getting responses right away, people do not wait. So you are absolutely losing business if you don't have someone dedicated to client experience What? so that somebody is answering the phone. Yeah. Let me stop you there for a second because they, there's other alternatives to that. There's answering services. What, what do you think distinguishes having like a VA in your business versus hiring a phone answering service? So this, um, the virtual team member carries clients all the way through the process. So it, it's every layer of the client touch. Mm -hmm. So they're a team member that is in your business. They're part of the culture. Uh, call centers have a place and answering services have a place. But if you have somebody that's part of your team, that's on a mission to grow your business with you, that's dedicated, they want to see the business's success as well, then they're involved in every aspect. It, they're answering the phone. They can be taught scripts um, because this is my favorite part. Now that we work with so many, I love having the resources to equip these people. Like, let's give you the sales script. Let's give you scripts and equip you with the ways to answer the phone, get people all the way through the process. 
get them an estimate with something like Responsibit or use some other software, equip them to take them and all the way through the process, including that that client got scheduled, that that client gets a follow up. And it's one person in the beginning until you have more admins that is responsible for that client in every layer of the touch. Mm -hmm. What is there a point where it's like too early for somebody to get an admin or is it right when you start a business, you should, you should get that admin role. Is, is there a point in time where it's like for sure by here, but here's, you know, the, that the normal impetus where somebody goes, Oh shit, I need some administrative help. It depends on the rate that you want to grow. Right. I think some yeah. people start many times, especially in, in home service space, in the service space, people are starting on the truck and it's them, they're in the crew, mm -hmm. right? And so it depends, it, it's making a decision about how quickly you want to grow and scale that business. If you're not putting anything into marketing and growing and you're just starting, you don't, no one's calling. <laughs> there aren't any clients. So there is that tipping point of, okay, I am all in and I'm gonna do some marketing and, and we're here that you want that person. That if they're going to be fed, if you are also dedicated to marketing and growing to feed that person, or you've spent a season growing and now you have clients. And once you have those clients, they need taken care of and can be grown into referrals and continuing to get your phone. Going. Hey, what's up, business nerd? Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you learned a heck of a lot watching that episode. Do me a favor, subscribe right down here. And if you really like what you saw, you got more goods right here. Check out this one or check out this one and do this. Go subscribe. Appreciate you. Work smarter, work harder. Go earn yourself some pride. Catch you on the next one.